This video is called The Trail of Tears, and we're going to be looking at the forced migration of Native Americans. It all begins with a guy named Andrew Jackson. You've probably heard of him before. Hopefully you have, because we talked about him last unit. He was the general that went into Florida and killed Arbuthnot and Amberster without them really doing anything wrong, which is a big controversy. Well, he eventually gets elected president. Um, he's very famous for his victories over the Seminoles and over the, the Creeks and his victory over the British in the War of 1812. So he becomes president, and he is nicknamed the Indian Killer for all of his victories over Native Americans. He clearly doesn't like Native Americans, and when he becomes president, he wants to see them removed as a threat to white settlement, especially in the South where he's from. So Jackson passes the Indian Removal Act in 1830, and basically what this does is it makes it okay for the United States government to take Native Americans from their land and move them someplace else. Believe it or not, that was actually a law. Yeah, crazy, I know. So what the law does is it takes lands out in the West. Um, in this particular case, it was in Oklahoma. And it blocks those lands off. They're called reservations. Native Americans are then moved from their traditional homelands in the East and pushed out into that land in the West. And there's really nothing that they can do about it. And here's a little cartoon sort of showing, political cartoon showing Indian removal. Now... Obviously, the Indian tribes are going to hate this law. One of those tribes was the Cherokees. And the Cherokees hate it because they basically have already done everything that the United States said that they were supposed to do. They adopted many ways of the Europeans and Americans. They formed their own written language, which many Native American tribes didn't do. They had their own newspapers. They had their own government. They had their own towns that looked very much like typical American towns. Had you walked into a Cherokee village in the 1830s, you probably wouldn't have noticed the difference between the Cherokees and any other village in, in Georgia at the time. It was very Americanized. The Cherokees, they wanted to just be left alone and to live their life, but the Indian Removal Act wouldn't let them do that. So the Cherokee people actually appealed to the United States Supreme Court for help to stop the Indian Removal Act. They lose their first case, but eventually they do win in the Supreme Court in the case Worcester versus Georgia, basically said that the Cherokees are their own people. They don't have to follow the laws of the United States because they're kind of like their own subgroup. So because they don't have to follow the laws of the United States, they rule that the Indian Removal Act doesn't actually have any effect on them. So it's a pretty big win for the Cherokee. However, the Cherokee have some internal problems. The Supreme Court ruling was big for the Cherokee. It was a good thing. However, it didn't stop Americans' greed. The Americans still want the Cherokee lands. So despite the Supreme Court ruling, Americans are still calling for the Cherokee to be removed, and they're still trying to take Cherokee lands by moving onto the lands. And basically, when the Americans move onto the lands, they cause trouble, there could be violence, and it's really bad. Some Cherokees, because of this behavior on the Americans, believe that the Cherokee removal is inevitable, and the Cherokees should just take the best deal possible and get out. These people are called the Tribal Party, or the Treaty Party, sorry. There are only a few people that believe this in the Cherokees. Most of the Cherokees want to stay and keep their land, and they want to fight for it. Now, Jackson does something very tricky. He calls the leaders of the small Treaty Party, the ones that want to move and get the best deal possible, and he makes a treaty with just that small group. Then, once that small group signs the treaty, he pretends as if everybody in the tribe was okay with it. This treaty was called the Treaty of New Dakota, and even though the whole tribe didn't agree, because the small group in the tribe does sign the treaty, um, the tribe can't stop it, and basically they lose all of their lands. They got four and a half million dollars for their lands, but they have to move. And four and a half million for all the land they're giving up is practically nothing. So they basically got robbed. The treaty party inside the Cherokees cost all the Cherokees their land. Now, the Cherokees are forced to move, and because of the Treaty of New Dakota and the Indian Removal Act, and this move happens in 1839, federal troops arrive and they basically force the Cherokees out of their homes. Many still don't want to leave. And you can see here's a little picture of it, um, artwork done of the forced move. As soon as the Cherokees leave their homes, there are white families literally lining up 
on the border of the property to take their belongings. So the Cherokees are, are moved out of their homes and white people move into their homes. Um, the Treaty of New Dakota was supposed to provide all the supplies and everything needed for the trip, but the United States doesn't follow through on their part of the treaty and the supplies for the trip were bad. And anybody that resisted movement on moving day was shot. So people were just killed if they didn't want to go. So it was a pretty brutal scene. Things didn't get much better for the Cherokees along the way. Here's a little map. You can see the Cherokee lands are here in um, orange. And this is the trip that many had to take across this line out over into um, the purple area here, which was the Indian reservations. So it was a journey that was many thousands of miles long. And the Cherokee, by the way, weren't the only ones to take this trip. Other Native Americans from this area were also forced to move. The Cherokee just are the most famous of them all because of the Trail of Tears. And this is why the Trail of Tears is called the Trail of Tears because of the, the treatment the Cherokees receive. The Cherokees have to travel a thousand miles um, by boats um, over foot and by wagon. The food given to them by the government is spoiled and rotten, and this is done to save money. Um, so people are dying because of starvation and because of bad food. The boats that are given to the Cherokee are dangerous and broken and will sink often and cause drowning. Disease is spreading throughout the camp because of unsanitary conditions. Old and young people are the most vulnerable on the trip. Um, the soldiers are given orders not to help the sick and dying. Uh, there are about 15,000 Cherokees that go on the, on the trip from their lands to the Indian Reservation. Along the way, 4,000 die. That's more than one in four. It's an incredible amount for a journey that long. So at the end of the journey here, the Trail of Tears is just one example. Um, you're going to be reading more about this terrible treatment of the Native Americans on the Trail of Tears, but brutality, indifference, neglect were very common toward the Native Americans. The Indian Removal Act opens up lands to more settlement and removes Native Americans as a threat in the East. Reservation life is miserable for Native Americans. When the U.S. continues to expand West, the reservations set up in the 1830s are again taken from Native Americans and they are moved further West. So this is an example of sad treatment toward the Native Americans and you'll be reading more about this in class.